Hello everyone, I'm Sleipnir17 and today I'm finally presenting my arbitrary code execution method for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. This setup is really similar to the Fire Red and Leaf Green one, and just like in that case you will need a Pokemon Emerald of any language, not necessarily the same of your target Ruby or Sapphire game. If you're using original hardware you will also need the material to trade with the target game. If you're an emulator this of course is not necessary. You also need to know how to perform arbitrary code execution on Pokemon Emerald. If you're not familiar with that glitch, you can check the description of this video, where you will find some useful links. Now, this video is not going to be a complete tutorial since I'm not going to show the needed codes on screen, you'll have to look them up from a written guide you can find in the description. The reason for this is that I want you to always use the most up-to-date codes, and while I can update the written guide as much as I want, I cannot modify this video in any way. Other than that, this video is going to show the whole procedure, so it can still be useful if you want to see the steps actually happen in the game. If you prefer written guides, you might want to skip this video entirely and just look at the document. The procedure is divided into three steps. The first step takes place on Pokemon Emerald and consists in generating an egg containing a Crobat. It will have a glitch move that is going to trigger a RAM execution on the target game. The second step also takes place on Emerald, and consists on the generation of a bootstrap Pokemon needed to convert the execution into a form that can actually be exploited. The last step is the trade of the egg and the bootstrap Pokemon got in the first two steps, as well as a really simple setup on the target game. Now I'll go into detail for each step. If you're playing along, I suggest you open the written guide in another tab, cause you're going to need it pretty much from the beginning. You can find three links in the description, just be aware that the guide you must follow is different depending on your Ruby or Sapphire language. The first step is really simple, and there is no substantial difference between the three guides, so I'll only show one example. Here's what you need to do. Write the box names you find in the written guide, depending on your ML language. Make sure that box 9 slot 27 is empty, and execute the code. You can choose the execution method you like the most. Here I'm using the most basic one, the egg hatch. If the execution was successful, an egg will now be in box 9 slot 27. You can keep this egg wherever you want, just avoid hatching it, cause you will need to trade it while still being an egg. With the egg acquired, you're ready to move to step 2. The next step requires you to execute some codes on Emerald in order to generate the bootstrap Pokemon. The second step is where things get a bit complicated, since different languages of Emerald and Ruby or Sapphire will differentiate the procedure quite a bit. I'll show all 5 different cases one by one. You can of course skip to the one you're interested in. This first case is the easiest. Regardless of the language of your Remnant game, you'll only need a single execution in order to generate the bootstrap. Simply write the correct box names depending on your Remnant language. Place a Pokemon you want to be the bootstrap in box 10 slot 2. And execute the code. After the execution, the Pokemon in box 10 slot 2 should be pretty similar to what it used to be, but its OT name should be different, looking like this for non-Japanese Emerald, or like this for Japanese Emerald. This is your bootstrap Pokemon, you can save the game and get ready for the last step. This case is really simple, just one execution and the bootstrap is ready. Choose the right box names depending on the type of execution you wish to use. Make sure box 10 slot 2 is empty. And execute the code. A shiny Absol should appear in box 10 slot 2. If so, save the game and get ready for the last step. This case requires two executions in a row. 
If you're executing by hashing eggs, make sure you have enough eggs beforehand. Cloning between the two executions is forbidden. First, you must execute code 1. Write the correct box names depending on your emerald language. Make sure box 10 slot 2 is empty. Exit DPC from box 14. And execute. After the execution, saving the game is not allowed, and looking at box 10 is also forbidden. Open the PC and look at box 14. Its name should be different, looking just like what you're seeing on screen. Now copy the box names for code 2. Remember, looking at box 10 is strictly forbidden. Execute the second code, then look at box 10. Slot 2 should now contain a shiny absorb. If so, save the game and get ready for the last step. This case only requires one execution, but an additional setup is needed. In the daycare, either place one female Pokemon regardless of its species, or one Ditto and a Pokemon regardless of its species and gender. Then write box names choosing the type of execution you wish to use. Make sure that box 1 slot 1 is empty and execute. Box 1 slot 1 should now contain a shiny banet. If so, go talk to the old man outside the daycare. He should give you an egg. Hatch the newly obtained egg. It will contain the speeches you chose to place in the daycare. Save the game, you're ready for the last step. This case consists in two executions and a little setup. In the daycare, either place one female Pokemon regardless of its speeches, or one Ditto and one Pokemon regardless of its species and gender. Then write the correct box names for code 1 depending on your emerald language. And execute. After the execution, look at box 14. Its name should look like the one you're seeing on screen. If so, go talk to the old man outside the daycare. He should give you an egg. Hatch the egg which contains the speeches you placed in the daycare before and save the game. Now write the box names for code 2. Make sure that box 10 slot 2 is empty. And execute. A shiny banette should appear in box 10 slot 2. If so, save the game and get ready for the last step. Before starting this last step, it is a good idea to clone the Crobat Egg from step 1 and the Bootstrap from step 2 as a backup. Trade one copy of these Pokemon to the target Ruby or Sapphire game.
Now unrub your sapphire, it's time to hatch Crobat. It will have one single glitch move, which is the one that will trigger the execution. The bootstrap should now be placed in the right PC slot, depending on your Ruby or Sapphire version. You can check the right locations in the Step 3 section of the paste bin. You'll also see how some slots must be empty. Now it's time to test if everything worked by executing one code. You can pick the one you want from the list linked in the description. On screen I chose the code to unlock Southern Island. Every time you want to execute a code, you must have a crowbat in your first party slot. The bootstrap must be in place. The forbidden slots must be empty. And the battle animations must be on. With all these in place, after writing the right box names, all you need to do is enter a battle and use the move. Its animation will trigger the execution and you will immediately exit the battle. As you can see here, the code worked properly, and I can now take the ferry to the southern island. Now, in this whole procedure one might experience many different problems and it is often hard to tell what went wrong. At the end of each paste bin, I've written a thorough troubleshooting paragraph that will cover most of the issues that might show up. Then of course, if you want you can contact me by leaving a comment. You can also use any of the socials listed in the description, I'll do my best to figure out a solution. That's it for now. I hope you found this new technique useful or interesting and I hope to see you in another video. Have a good day!